Hey everyone, and welcome to our Georgia Tech student panel today about music at Tech. Um, we are super, super excited that you've all taken the time out of your day to hop on this Blue Jeans call with us. Um, today we have myself as well as three other tour guides who are all involved in various music organizations and ensembles on campus to answer some pre-submitted questions as well as any questions you may have during our time here today. Um, so with that being said, I think the four of us are going to go ahead and introduce ourselves and then we'll get started. Um, so I'll start off. My name is Jonathan. I'm a fourth year aerospace engineer here at Georgia Tech. Originally, I'm from McDonough, Georgia, so I'm not too far away, only about an hour. I'm here at Tech. I'm outside of band. Some of my involvements are undergraduate research. Um, I've done two different internship rotations, um, as well as being a part of one of our leadership organizations here on campus. Um, but really inside the music sphere, um, I've been involved in three different ensembles the Georgia Tech Marching Band, Georgia Tech Pet Band, and the Georgia Tech Jazz Ensemble, and I have played trumpet in all of those ensembles. Mike, would you like to introduce yourself next? Absolutely. Uh, hey, everybody. My name is Mike Marzano. I am a fifth-year computer engineer, uh, originally from Augusta, Georgia, which is just a two-hour shot down I-20 headed east. A little bit about what I do on campus. Um, of course, I'm involved in tour guides, which is super fun. I am also a teaching assistant for one of our introductory computer science courses, CS1371. Um, I have also done three internship rotations, two in Maryland, one in Texas, and uh, have gone on a study abroad program, uh, which was super fun. Uh, but of course, the thing you guys are here to talk about is music. I, like Jonathan, am a trumpet. Uh, I've only been in two ensembles, our marching band and pep band. Uh, but have gotten to do a lot of cool things with both of those, and we'll hopefully get to tell you guys about them. Uh, Greeny, you want to go next? Sounds good. Hey, everyone. My name is Matt Green. Uh, I'm a fourth-year industrial engineer here at Georgia Tech, also doing a minor in computer science. I'm originally from Johns Creek, Georgia, so also pretty close to the area. Uh, here on campus, I'm involved in tour guides. I'm involved in a leadership honor society. I've also spent time working as a teaching assistant for the College of Computing. Uh, within the band realm, I've participated in marching band for two years as a tenor saxophone and two years as a drum major. I have done pet band for three seasons now, and then I've spent a number of semesters in the concert and symphonic bands playing alto, tenor, and baritone saxophone. So looking forward to answering any questions you all may have. And with that, I will hand it off to Carolyn. All right. Hi, everybody. My name is Carolyn Lessig. I'm a third year biochemistry major from a little town in South Georgia called Blackshear. Um, aside from being a tour guide, um, I'm involved in SGA and a few of our committees. I'm also a rec camp counselor, so in the orientation process. Um, and I'm also involved in a music service facility. Uh, aside from that, from music, of course, I have also been involved in the Yellow Jacket Marching Band playing clarinet. And I've played, also played clarinet in our pet band and concert band. Awesome. Well, thanks, everybody, for introducing yourselves. Um, with that being said, I think we will go ahead and start with some of our prepared questions. Um, if anybody wants to just take one, um, feel free to just like unmute yourself and go for it. So the first one we have. Um, how difficult is balancing academics and participation in various ensembles and marching band? I can take this question. Um, I'm a fifth year, so I've done this for many years, uh, and I found bands unbelievably um, like manageable with all of my classes. Uh, for me, band is one of the things that I also do to relax. It's my break from my classes. So marching band uh, is the big, big time commitment that we have in the fall. It is three two-hour practices, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And honestly, it's probably some of my favorite like portions of the week. I get to be outside, I get to relax, I get to hang out with my friends. Uh, and so it is a lot of fun. Uh, with marching band, you also have your Saturdays are taken up by Georgia Tech football games, which are an absolute blast. It's a fun like way to relax. Uh, and if you do ever find yourself like struggling, the band community here at Georgia Tech is super supportive. So anytime that I've been struggling in a class, struggling with an assignment, uh, odds are, and I mean, like, it's pretty much like 99 to 1, I have somebody in the Georgia Tech band community who has either taken a class that I'm taking, is taking a class with me, 
um, or is already knowledgeable about a subject. And so I'm able to reach out to them and get assistance, any assistance I need really, really quick. So I personally have never struggled balancing my love for music with my uh, academic pursuits here. Yeah, just to add on that, um, so as a biochem major, I have a lot of labs, and a lot of the times they're long and conflict with band. Um, so that just kind of happens, but the band directors that we have, especially for a marking band, are super good about getting you overrides if you ever need to take another class instead of band. Um, and they understand that, especially at tech, um, academics are probably your priority as opposed to band. Um, so they usually work around that and they they want you to be better off so they usually help you out whenever you might need to miss a band class for something or you have some sort of class that that um, conflicts at the same time as band. Awesome. Um, thank you for those answers. I could not agree more with those responses. Um, so going on to the next question we have here. If there is a pressing theme for school or something you have to miss a practice for, is there a difficulty or penalty in missing the practice? Are all games mandatory? And what if you needed to miss one? Um, I guess I will go ahead and start this and kind of bounce back to what Carolyn was talking about a little bit ago with like class conflicts and stuff like that. Um, the directors are super lenient. Um, like she said, we understand that at Tech, academics come first. Um, yes, the people in band love band and we're here to focus on it and whatnot but they do understand that sometimes you have labs, sometimes you have a homework assignment, sometimes there's just other stuff, life gets in the way, and um, they really do a good job of making sure that we can manage our other responsibilities outside of band and not having band be something that's keeping us from being successful or um, doing whatever we need to do. Um, with regards to games being mandatory, um, our home games are mandatory, um, but our away games are not. Would someone want to talk about how away games work with marching band? I can go ahead and take this one. So each year, the full band will travel together to either Clemson or to UGA, whichever one is away that year, because they alternate. And the rest of the away games are all done on a volunteer sign-up basis at the beginning of the season. You get to rank your preferences for which games you would like to go to most. And then the staff assistants for the band will organize everyone's preferences and get everyone uh, to, to get the most choices that they can of their highest preferences. Um, and then we will get to go to those games with a smaller portion of the band. Uh, typically, if it is a game that we can drive to, we'll take about one third of the band with us. If it is a game that is a little bit further, like up in New York or down in Miami, those kinds of trips, uh, we will fly with about a sixth or so of the band. So, but we still get to go. They have some portion of the band that gets to go to every game, which is super cool. Um, really awesome that Athletics is so excited to have us there alongside supporting the teams. Um, and it's a really, really great opportunity to go support them across the country. Um, so, yeah, away games are completely optional. If there is enough uh, demand for people to go, um, then you'll get or if, if there's enough interest, you'll get to go to as many as you would like. Um, however, if you, if you don't want to go to any away games, none are mandatory. Uh, you can also stay home relax, get work done, study, um, watch the games on TV with your friends, all that good stuff. Um, and so they're not at all mandatory. And if you need to miss even the home games, um, if there are reasons that you need to miss them, you can speak to the directors and they're super understanding. Like everyone's already said, they're really, really good about understanding that we have other things going on. As much as we all love music and love band, we also have other things going on and they're very good about understanding that. And one other thing I will add uh, is, at least in marching band, we also have another set of gigs called spirit band gigs. Uh, and so this is where we take our marching band, we split it up into about into six, and each uh, six of the band goes to smaller gigs, which we call spirit band gigs. So these could be before football games, wandering around campus, playing for the fans who are here. This is playing at our GT volleyball and women's and men's basketball games. And so those as well are mandatory, but they're also a lot more flexible. So within your section, we have subs. Uh, so if there is something, you have a test, you have an assignment, uh, and you need to miss that game, you can message your section and just be like, hey guys, I've got something coming up. Can somebody sub for me? Um, and oftentimes it'll be just a game swap. It's like, hey, I can't do this gig on Thursday, but I can do the one on Friday. Can anyone switch? It's something I've done like countless times. And the band is here, as I said, to support each other. And so people are often 
very, very willing to do those swaps with you um, if you ever need to miss those gigs. Awesome. So our next question is, do you have to practice your instruments a lot outside of the rehearsals? So I can speak to this one. Um, it really depends on how much you want to put into the organization. Um, so marching band, like practicing Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I don't know many people that practice outside of marching band practice. Um, if you do want to practice and you are involved in marching band, concert band, whatever, um, any sort of music organization, you can actually reserve practice room access. Um, so our music building called the Dutch Building has a few practice rooms um, and you can reserve access for that. If you're in an ensemble, it's half off to reserve access. Um, so if you do want to practice outside of designated practice times, you can definitely get um, practice room access. Uh, the directors also know that if you're a freshman, uh, you probably don't want to play your instrument inside your dorm. Uh, so like with marching band, I think if, like having practice Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you're not really expected. Um, that's as much as effort you want to put in. Um, same goes with concert and symphonic. And a little different this semester because uh, we've had to cancel a few times. So usually when you cancel, like you use that time to practice back in your dorm. Um, but it's really how much effort you want to put into it. There's no outside like requirement. Adding on to that just a little bit, I will say, like Carolyn said, it definitely depends on the ensemble. Um, I do have seen that a little bit more, especially in symphonic and concert bands. You'll see people practice a little bit more outside of ensemble times than you will in marching, pet band. I don't know if Jonathan can speak to jazz band a little bit. Um, but it really depends on the ensemble and what you want to get out of it. Um, specifically, I know the symphonic band, we tend to really do some tough literature in there. And so there are times where I know that I've never felt the need to do it for marching band, but I've had a couple of parts in symphonic band where I say, wow, this is this is pretty tough. Let me go spend, you know, a couple hours here, a couple hours there, making sure I've I've got it all down so that I can play my part well. But there are no requirements, and it's very much dependent on the person. Yeah. So for jazz band, um, it kind of depends. We have two different jazz ensembles in tech, um, and I'm in like the top one, jazz one, and our director Chip, um, especially these past two semesters, this not being able to meet as regularly as we have in the past. Um, we have actual like recording assignments, progress recordings, but, like every other week you have to record yourself playing through different sections that he feels like maybe like the trumpet section is struggling with this part or the entire ensemble is struggling with a part of a piece. Um, you have to submit a recording like online. Um, it's not actually like he's going to grade you if you do poorly or anything like that. He's just, you know, gives you a hundred for turning in or whatever, but he just wants to really like know that you're working on it and know that you're like actually moving towards improving on that. Um, but it's not like, you know, anything high pressure or anything like there are any like playing tests. Like I know we had in high school and they're not going to like pull you over to the side and your section leader is going to have you play the entire thing on your own to make sure you have your music memorized or anything like that. Our next question we have is if students usually have a say or suggestions for pieces that groups will play. Go ahead and take this, I guess. Uh, so I think that also is pretty dependent on the ensemble. Typically, uh, the directors will, so BJ, who runs both the concert and symphonic bands, he usually uh, has his list that he, of pieces he's excited to get into in the next couple of semesters. Um, but he also talks with people a lot, and there have been times that someone will mention a piece they really like, and he goes, oh, you know, I haven't heard that in a while, and he sits down, and he listens to it, and he says, you know what, we should play that next semester. So he's done that. I've seen that happen. Um, but for the most part in the concert and symphonic program, um, you can talk to him, but it's a little less where we're picking a list. Um, in the marching band as well, uh, Chris, who is the director of athletic bands, is a fantastic arranger as well. He arranges so much of the music that we play uh, out on the field for our halftime shows, and he does a great job with that. Um, well, not it's not uncommon as well for him to kind of get some input on the kinds of shows that students want to do. But the big place that students and the band has an influence is in the marching band uh, stand tune selections. Uh, every year, the, the members of the band can submit suggestions for stand tunes they like and they want to add. Uh, if there may be some that they think, you know, they don't like as much anymore, 
And the list changes every year of the songs that we play based on input from the band members, which is a super awesome way for us to make sure that we're going out there and playing music we want to play for the fans. All right. Um, our next question is, what is the audition process for these ensembles? And it says, I'm particularly interested in jazz ensemble, but only able to do one band. Um, and then, so I guess we can answer that. And there's a second question um, we can bounce on to, which is, can you join marching band and different ensembles in the same year? Um, I guess I can just speak to jazz real quick um, and say that for the jazz auditions, it's kind of a two-part thing. You have a prepared piece. You can pick literally any song you want. It can be jazz. It can be not jazz, um, literally anything. And you have to just play your prepared piece, usually between like two and like two minutes long or something like that. And then there's an optional part of uh, the audition, which is improv, where you can choose like a standard 12 bar blues and whatever key you want. And you can just improv over it um, for like 16 bars or whatever um, but once again that's optional and it's not something for jazz you have to do like get in the top ensemble or anything um, i know several people who are in jazz one um who have never done the uh improv part of the audition uh, would someone else like to speak about like concert band and the marching band auditions yeah so i can speak towards concert band um so all of our sit down bands concert band um symphonic band and the orchestra so if you wanted to play the, the strings and um, they all have the same process. You have one piece that you, um, if you just want to do concert band, you're absolutely sure you just want to do concert band, there's only one piece that you have to play, and then you do the normal chromatic and then um, do three scales in a row. Uh, so that's for concert band. For symphonic band, if you want to be in the higher level band, they'll do an additional piece of music. Usually it's like one is lyrical and one is technical piece, which is pretty similar to most audition processes. Uh, and then from there, if you indicate that you're interested in like um, one of the orchestras, then they might ask you if you want to play in the orchestra as well. But that's usually how concert band works. I can go ahead and take marching band. So the marching band uh, uh, audition process is honestly my favorite audition process uh, because it's only a placement process. So Georgia Tech marching band and pet band does not cut anybody. Um, we are, it's an entirely a volunteer band of people who want to be there and the directors understand that uh, and everybody here since they want to be here will work uh, and so the directors don't cut anybody so it's purely a placement uh, exam or a placement audition uh, so you start by having I think it, you prepare like uh, the fight songs so you'll get white and gold and ramble you'll have access to these over the summer that you can practice so you have to play both of those uh, with for whatever part first second or third that you're trying out for uh, then you have to do, I believe it's also your chromatic scale and then two scales of your choice. And it's a super chill and relaxed. You go in, play it for whichever, whoever's listening, and then you'll get your part assignment. Um, and yeah, it's pretty simple, pretty easy. And then pet band most of the time, uh, since pet band happens in the spring semester and marching band in the fall, uh, if you participated in marching band uh, or have participated in pet band in the past, the audition process is, uh, hey, what part did you play for marching band? Or what part did you play last year? And then the directors will often just stick you right back on that part. Also, I just thought about this. Um, if you want, like, if you like, after this, you want to just look at the audition process, it's all at music.gatech, so gatech.edu. The audition process is all on. And so then bouncing back to the second part of that, asking if you only could do one band or whatever, um, absolutely not. You could do as many ensembles as your heart desires. Um, I think a lot of people who are in concert band or symphonic band or jazz band probably do another ensemble at the same time. Um, I know in the fall, I do marching band and jazz band at the same time. Um, and I think in, sometimes in the spring, people do like pet band, concert band at the same time and stuff like that. Some people will even do three. They'll do like jazz combo, jazz ensemble, and marching band, and all sorts of crazy stuff. So um, you can do it um, however much you want. Our next question is if the marching band provides instruments for its members. So I could take that. Um, yeah, marching band has a large selection of instruments to provide, uh, and most of the instruments uh, the marching band will provide. So any percussion inst on, uh, instrument band will provide are uh, mellophones, trumpets, piccolos, 
uh, and sousaphones, sousaphones and euphoniums are all provided by the band. Uh, so if you play trombone uh, or clarinet or saxophone, uh, you have to provide your own. Um, I believe the band will also uh, do tenor saxes. Greeny, correct me if I'm wrong on that. Um, Not yeah. anymore. Okay, cool. They so did that was... starting like five or six years ago, but it has not happened since then. Okay. So cool. they do not yeah. do tenors so, anymore. So yeah, you'll have to provide your own. Um, but uh, even if not, the band has, if you need an instrument, uh, the band has resources and, with communities in the area who are able to help you acquire any instrument that uh, you may need to use. And I know the question specifically asked about marching band, but on the uh, front for the other ensembles as well, uh, the school does have access to some of the more uh, less common instruments, like for example, berry sax. You don't have to have your own berry sax. The school has those soprano saxes, I know as well, E flat clarinets, those kinds of things the school has to provide as well for the concert ensembles and jazz ensembles. So our next question um, is, can you learn an entirely new instrument? I guess I'll go ahead and take that. Yes. The answer is yes. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Jonathan. Uh, yeah, no, same thing. Um, one of my friends in the band, Faith, um, she played clarinet. And then one semester in pet band, she decided she wanted to learn to play trombone. And so the directors were like, yeah, sure, you can um, play trombone. And so she learned trombone and she's played trombone ever since. So especially in pet band, the directors are a lot more chill about people learning a new instrument. Um, or I feel like in marching band, I know of people who have, um, but it's more like switching from like one saxophone to another or switching from something similar. Um, but in pet band, whatever, they'll let you try something completely new if you want. Yeah, adding on to that, that happens all over the place. Um, one of the people who was a drum major with me uh, for the last couple of years, she started off as a clarinet player her freshman year, decided she wanted to learn saxophone for pet band, so she did that. And then she became a drum major. So she's gotten to play all of those instruments. Another one of my good friends here, he's a trombone player, and some of his really good friends that he made during his freshman year were all mellophones, and they all lived together this year, and so he was in a room with a bunch of mellophones, and this year for a pet band, he said, you know what? I want to learn to play the mellophone. So now it's a room full of mellophone players, and it's really awesome. The directors are very much uh, in support of people exploring all the musical avenues they want to. It's a great opportunity, and, and as people have mentioned, there's a great community here, so if you want to learn an instrument, there are a lot of people who are probably very happy to help teach you. All right, our next question. In marching band, is everything memorized? I can take this one. I'm not the best at memorizing my music, so I was very nervous about coming into tech uh, if I would have to memorize my music. Uh, so stand students, those, you have your flip holder when you're in the stands, so you don't have to memorize any of those. Um, it took me a while to memorize the fight songs. I definitely didn't have those memorized until maybe the end of freshman year, maybe sophomore year. Uh, but you, we have music for that as well. Um, the only big thing that you need to memorize is like halftime music. Um, I think the first game that we do, we got to use flip holders. It's been a while since we've marched on the field because um, we couldn't this past year, but usually only like you'll have to memorize your halftime music and then for our pre-game show, so that's uh, some renditions of the fight song, um, our alma mater, and then like Star Fangled Banner if we ever need a poster. And uh, also to, to add on for that, um, it's it's normally more, I've always heard it described as highly encouraged for you to memorize those pieces, especially when you're having to do marching. Uh, it's kind of just a lot to, 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 to be marching, to have your flip folder and to be trying to do all those page turns like while you're performing. Uh, with that being said, if there's a really difficult part and you just need your music, by all means do it. Uh, we're, our directors are concerned about sounding good and looking good, um, not just like have the haha we have everything memorized type of band uh so i know a lot of people i did it my first year and even into my sophomore year uh and i'll have my flip folder out there on the field and i may just be holding it until we get to a, a park and blow and then i'll uh get it out look at the part that i need to and then just kind of go back to holding it for the rest of the show so it it really is a like low stress uh when it comes to music memorization 
And the nice yeah. thing too is we end up rehearsing it all enough that there's usually not much need for memorizing it in separate time, especially things like the fight songs. Uh, very few people I think have ever had to actually try to memorize the fight songs because you play it so much that you just know it. Um, sometimes it might take 10 or 15 minutes on something like the halftime music or whatever, but the fight songs, we play them all so much. The stand tunes, you play them all so much. A lot of them you start to memorize anyways, even though we do have our flip folders available to us in the stands. Um, so it's very much a low stress in the front of having to have things memorized. Rini, you read my mind with that answer. Um, so our next one is in two parts. The first is when do auditions take place? So auditions are always at the uh, beginning of the semester. So for our sit down bands and uh, all and, and orchestra, that'll happen during your first week of classes. It's known as phase two registration. Uh, so this is where at the start of the semester in your classes, you are able to add, drop, mix around your schedule as you need to, like without penalty. Uh, so that's when auditions happen. So that way you can uh, register for the corresponding ensemble that you make it in uh, if perhaps you don't get into your first choice of ensemble. Uh, so that's for our sit down bands. And then for marching bands, those auditions happen at the start of band camp. So during a normal semester, that first day, we bring in all of the uh, rats, which is our term for a first year student. Um, and so we bring in all of the rats. You have your own first half of the day to go through everything that you need to go through. You do your auditions, you get like set up and ready and good. Uh, and then for vets, which is our term for uh, veterans or returning members, uh, you have the second half of the, that first day at band camp is when you'll go through all of your auditions. All right, and so the second part of the question was, are there any music scholarships I would be able to apply for? Um, I can say a very niche answer real quick and say that if you are a trumpet section leader, you get a $250 scholarship every semester if you're section leader. Um, but outside of that, um, does someone like to speak to what's available? Yeah, so um, incoming, if you want to do marching band, um, we will have, there's, we usually give out two scholarships to rats. Um, so that covers like your band fees. Um, and if that's something that you're interested in, um, you'll indicate that you're interested in marching band, and then somewhere, some way, someone's going to send you an email that'll have that form in there. Um, and it's just like a Google form that you fill out with some questions and answers. Um, but that is specifically for marching band students, and it'll usually go to two incoming freshmen. So another question here. Um, what is the band culture at Georgia Tech like? I think we've talked about this song. Um, but is there just anything else anybody would like to add on to it? So uh, one really important thing uh, is that uh, our band is very kind of, it, it, I, I'm not sure the best way to, it's super, it, it's fun and high energy is the best way I can describe it, uh, with a particular focus on making sure that our incoming band members have fun. So we so much so that uh, we have two elected positions every year called the Rat Parents, um, that their entire job is to help incoming members to the band get adjusted to uh, our just weird traditions uh, and just how we do things. So how we go through game days, how we go through rehearsal, to be a mentor. So this is a position that I uh, cur am currently holding. I held it in the fall uh, and continue to now. And so that's one of my favorite parts about GT Band is like when I got here like in 2016, uh, I had my rap parents, everybody on this call has had their rap parents and they're just a really cool mentor. It's an automatic friend that you have coming in. Um, and it's, it's really fantastic. And then we continue that by pairing all of our rats with an older member of the band. That's our rat vet system. So you as a incoming member, as a rat, get to adopt an older person. Uh, and you basically get to pick a friend. Uh, and so they'll be there to help you get adjusted and get situated during your first week. Uh, it's totally like low stress. Like if you were like some of like some some of uh, some of the incoming first first years like talk to me and they were like, oh, my goodness, Mike, like I'm so stressed. Who do I pick? Uh, I promise you it's not a stressful thing. You have your rat parents there to help you. You have your section leaders, members of the band there to help you. So it, it really is is just a community and a family is the best way I describe it and a family that really makes sure to look after 
um, the people who are coming in and make sure that you are having just as fun an experience as everybody else had when they first got in. Also, just to add, just as a, a weird little tidbit, um, I'm pretty sure everyone in the call, we all live with all band people. <laughs> so, like, if that gives you a gauge of the music community here at Tech, it's very close knit. Um, I think one of the benefits, not per, like the benefits per se of like not having music majors at Tech, is that everyone that's in the band is like very much just enjoys music, and there's like no competition or anything. Uh, so we're just, all just there having a good old time. Um, so it's a great way to like make close friendships. Um, all of my closest friends are in band. I mean, band kid forever. So yeah. Yeah, Mike touched on this, and I completely agree. The biggest word I would use for it is just a family. And people throw that word around all the time, but I really think that that's the best way to sum up what the the band and the music culture is. Here at Georgia Tech, we all are here for each other. We support each other during the exciting times, during the times where it's a little tougher and you've got a big test coming up. Your friends are there to help support you. Your section members and other people in the band are there because they're in your classes and they're studying with you and you're forming study groups and you're, you know, going over things. And if there's something you don't get, you can reach out to another band member and say, hey, I've got this linear algebra test and I really don't understand this thing. Is there someone who can help me? And an older member of the section will come in and say, yes, let's find an hour, let's grab some dinner, and let's help you work through this. And it's such an incredible resource while you're going through your classes, while you're studying. Also a great resource as you're looking ahead to, you know, what classes should I take? Is this too much to do in one semester? Um, what did you think of this particular class or professor and their style? This is the kind of teaching I like. Do you think that matches up well? Um, and finding people to take classes with, everyone's just here to support each other 110% all the way through, and it's absolutely fantastic. All right, uh, so a couple more questions come in here. Um, somebody in the chat is a pianist, and they asked which groups have piano players. Um, so I can say for jazz, um, we do have multiple piano players and both of our jazz ensembles, uh, if that's your thing. Um, since we play usually like you know, five or six songs per concert, we'll have like probably like two piano players per ensemble and we'll kind of split it up. So each person's really only playing um, two or three songs. We also usually in marching band, there's usually someone in the pit um, who plays a keyboard synthesizer, something along those lines. Um, does anybody know about orchestra or symphonic band or anything like that? I can say for concert and symphonic band, uh, it's pretty common for at least some of the pieces to have piano parts on them um, depending on how it goes and sometimes we'll have if the concert we're planning for has a lot of pieces with piano parts we'll have a dedicated pianist in the ensemble sometimes if it's only one piece on the on the program it might just be that some saxophone player or clarinet player who's also a pianist will put their clarinet down for a piece go play the piano and then come back and pick up their clarinet for the next piece again um, but yeah, it is not uncommon as well in the concert symphonic bands to have piano parts. Yeah, I think I actually saw a another similar question pop up saying um, there are there facilities where you can keep up with piano and um, stuff like that. And the answer is yes. Um, we do have practice rooms that have keyboards and pianos in them. So just like you could go in it to play a wood in wind instrument or another wind instrument or anything like that, um, you can also go and practice piano in our practice rooms. Um, moving on to our next question. Um, other bands besides concert, marching, and jazz band to play, um, specifically with genres like rock and other stuff? Yes, there are other ensembles for many different genres of music. We do have some things like a rock and pop couple of ensembles that will meet as well. Um, I have not partic personally participated in those, but I have some friends who have, and they've really enjoyed them. It's a great opportunity to go and find whatever genre of music speaks to you. And sometimes you can bounce around from semester to semester and get a taste of it all. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of flexibility. And if there's a kind of group that you want to play in that doesn't exist as a formal ensemble at Tech, there are so many people around that would love to form a band with you. I know a lot of people We'll, we'll form bands and play whatever kind of music it is they want to, and there are a lot of great opportunities on and near campus to perform 
with whatever groups you would like to like to form as well. Um, our next question is if you can take and register ABRSM exams through Georgia Tech. I will be real honest and say I am unsure of what an ABRSM exam is. Um, and I don't know if uh, any other people on the panel do, um, but I would definitely say that if that is something you are interested in and curious about, um, like Carolyn mentioned earlier, the music website is um, music.gotech.edu. And there, um, you either should probably be able to find that information or you can get in contact with a representative from the School of Music um, who would be able to help you out with that. Um, another question we have come in, is there a time frame to sign up for an ensemble or can I wait until I'm on campus to check out which group I like before I commit? So uh, I can take that. That goes back to what I was talking about earlier about phase two uh, registration. So it's uh, definitely preferable. Um, and at least for marching band, uh, you need to decide for like during the summer if you're going to participate uh, because the directors do a lot of work over the summer to arrange, make sure that we have enough marching spots on the show so that way we don't have to rely on alternates. So for that one in particular, it's very it's pretty much required to, to be a part uh, to sign up for that over the summer. But for the rest of them, you absolutely can wait until you are on campus uh, during phase two registration, which is that first week, which is also during auditions. Uh, is where you decide um, if you really want to do it. Uh, I'm not sure there's very much opportunity to join one of our official ensembles like partway through the semester. Uh, you may have to wait until the next semester to join. Uh, but if there is like a kind of an unofficial group that you want to participate in, uh, there absolutely is no barrier to joining and starting those groups at any point during the semester. Yeah, to add on just a little bit of specificity for that on the concert and symphonic band front, um, the auditions will happen that first Tuesday of classes. Uh, so you do need to decide if you're going to audition by by the time auditions do happen on those Tuesdays. Um, so you have a little bit of time to get here, but if you're interested in doing one of those ensembles, you uh, during your first semester, it'll be you'll have to decide pretty much right when you get to campus, uh, so that you can prepare your audition and audition on that first Tuesday. And I think jazz also happens on that first Tuesday as well, if I, if I recall correctly. So pretty similar time frame there. Um, yeah. Yeah, I will add on one thing to that and say, um, I don't think I've ever heard of someone at Tech um, joining an ensemble, um, being unsure about it, and then regretting it. Um, what I much more commonly hear is people um, being like, man, I really wish I hadn't waited till my second semester to join jazz band or you know, whatever the ensemble may be. So another one is, could I do marching band in the summer slash fall and do jazz ensemble when that's not going on, um, or either of those all year? Um, so as far as I'm aware, concert, symphonic, jazz band, any sit-down bands like that don't operate during the summer. Um, and yes, you absolutely could do jazz ensemble when marching band is not going on. Um, it's going to be in both the fall and spring. Um, so yeah whichever you would, uh, whatever your personal preference is with that. Yeah, and to give a little like, I don't know, a little explanation about how you can do both. Um, I feel like we haven't mentioned this, but marching band is Sunday, Wednesday, Friday, and all of the sit down ensembles like jazz ensemble um, and all of the sit down bands and our symphony and orchestra, those are all Tuesday, Thursday. Um, so they try to have it so that if you want to have marching band and do a sit down, you can do that. All right, our next question here says, I was thinking about bringing a keyboard and electric guitar that I could play with headphones in my dorm. Would that be a good idea or should I just use practice rooms instead? So I can take that. So uh, I play uh, acoustic and electric guitar. I actually have my electric and a small amp sitting right here by my desk. Uh, and that absolutely is something you can do. One of my roommates was also a uh, electric bass player and he practiced with headphones all the time. Uh, like as long as you are like doing your best not to be a bother to the other people in your hall, especially because like we do have quiet hours on on-campus dorms because we're all living together as a community. Um, but yeah, so like if you said you're willing to bring headphones, that's absolutely something you can do. 
uh, it's something I've done and really enjoyed um, and would probably also encourage you to do. And for the keyboard, uh, my friend is a pianist. So like freshman year to give you to, I bet you're probably worried about like space wise, whether or not you should bring it. Uh, but she like had her bed lofted and then underneath was like a little, little chill zone where she played piano. But yeah, I would definitely recommend bringing it. And there's also some really cool, I'm blanking on the name of the organization at the moment, but there's some organization on Canvas that the last couple of years has really been helping to promote keyboards being being placed around campus. So there's now, like they added one in West Village and they're starting to add some in some different buildings around campus where there will just be some pianos available in, in common spaces for people to go and play as well. So if you're concerned about space or you decide that it doesn't make sense for you or anything like that, um, there are also plenty of opportunities around, in addition to the dedicated uh, music building practice rooms, where you can go and play piano. All right. Um, I think we are at our last question for the day here. Um, that is, is there somewhere to store instruments on campus? I guess I'll go ahead and take that. Um, the answer is yes, we do have a very nice instrument storage slash locker room, whatever you want to call it, in the uh, couch music building. Um, there's a very small fee to rent for the semester and you can store your instrument in there as you need to. Um, it's safe, it's secure, it's protected by each individual locker is protected by a combination lock that only you will have the combination to. And the room itself is secured with buzz card only access to only people who are within the music program. Uh, and who have locker room access for the year have the ability to go into that room. It's very safe, very secure, and there's plenty of space to store instruments of whatever size you need. Uh, and one quick note, uh, the buzz card is your RFID student ID uh, that tells people that you are a Georgia Tech student and you have a little, which Carolyn is showing for us right now. Uh, so that's what uh, Greeny meant when he said buzz card. Um, but then also during the marching season, if you play a large instrument, uh, like the sousaphone or any of our percussion instruments, we have dedicated trucks that you store your instruments on during the season, uh, which are also kept securely padlocked, all the doors, um, and then those are also stored at a uh, dedicated Georgia Tech um, like facilities hub for Georgia Tech vehicles. So you also don't have to worry about any of those instruments being um, something happened to them. Uh, and even if they do, they're school of music instruments, so nothing would be on you. All right. Um, well, like I said, that is our last question for the day. Um, I just want to say thanks for participating and asking so many questions. I know for myself as a tour guide, answering questions is a big part of why I love doing this so much. And so I'm glad we got to do that for all of y'all. Um, and so now we're going to share something that we like to call our Why Tech story, um, which is just a short little bit about why each of us chose to come to Georgia Tech. Um, so, Mike, if you want to go first. Awesome, thanks for letting me go first. Um, so yeah, why did I pick Georgia Tech? Uh, for me, it was kind of the easy, convenient option. So as I said, I'm from Augusta, Georgia, which is two hours away. I was interested in engineering from a young age. Both of my parents were electrical engineers. They came home from work every day and were like, sorry, Mike, all of my work is proprietary because I'm an adult, but you would absolutely love what I'm doing. And so I'm like, hmm, I want to go grow up and be my mom and dad. So looking uh, when it came time to look for colleges, it was like, hey, Georgia Tech, right down the road. Hey, I get in-state tuition. Hey, I have um, scholarship opportunities provided through the state of Georgia. And then it was like, oh, uh, and their computer engineering program at that point was number six, which is now number four. And so it was kind of a no-brainer for me to apply um, and attend. So that's why I picked Tech, uh, but I've stayed because I found my home and I found a family. Uh, I love the people here and their traditions. It's so much fun. I like to say I had more fun than should be allowed as a freshman in college. And a lot of that truly was because of my Georgia Tech band experience. Um, the friends that I made are going to be lifelong friends. Like I, like when it, when I become a real adult, um, I'm going to probably have my band friends at my wedding. Um, when you go all across the country, you have a huge network of Georgia Tech alum and band alum. Uh, there to like reach out and support and help you. And so like every semester that I've been here over my long time has been a fun semester. Um, 
there's just so much to do on campus. There's so much fun to be had uh, and so many great people to meet. So even though I came here for the academics, uh, I absolutely stayed here uh, and love being here because of the, our people and tradition. All right, Greeny, you want to go next? Sure, sounds good. Uh, so my why Georgia Tech is actually a little bit different than Mike's. Um, so like I mentioned before, though, I did grow up very near to Georgia Tech. And for a long time, I've known that I was interested in kind of the STEM pathway for my career aspirations and all of that. Um, but I never really wanted to go to Georgia Tech. I never really did any research or knew anything about it, but I just kind of said, Georgia Tech, it's so close. I want to go somewhere else. And my whole perception of it was that it was just a bunch of nerds. Um, all they did was study, study, study. There were, you know, people who were social. There wasn't great music opportunities. People didn't go and enjoy all the sporting events and all of that. And that was my perception. It was completely uninformed, but that was my perception. And I said, I don't want to go to Georgia Tech. I don't want to do that. No, no, no. I'm going somewhere else. Um, but as I started to get into high school, I realized that I should at least give it a little bit of research and find out more about it before I made a decision. And I kind of started to realize, oh, you know, there are some music ensembles here. But but no, 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 there's no, I don't want to go there again. All, all a bunch of nerds. I don't want to do that. And as I came and I decided to take a couple tours just to confirm my suspicions that nobody had a personality and all they did was study and all of that. I came on tour and I met an awesome tour guide who was having a lot of fun and enjoying themselves and really had a pleasant personality. And they had friends when we were walking around campus. And that was one of the things that stood out to me is just walking around campus and you see students everywhere. They're happy. They're smiling. They're sitting outside and having lunch together. They're throwing a Frisbee on tech green and just hanging out. And when we're walking with our tour guide and every couple of minutes they see a friend and the friend waves and is so excited to see them. That to me was one of the signs of, wow, people here really are, are enjoying themselves. And it's not just about checking the box for being a good school academically. And as I did more research and I talked to more people and I took another tour, I saw the same thing. And I was like, wow, I guess it wasn't just dumb luck. I guess they really, truly do uh embody the whole culture here and as i came to georgia tech i realized that that was absolutely the case as everyone's mentioned this whole time my closest friends all through the band love every single one of them i spent so much time with these people um so the people here in school and also the people who come from outside the whole georgia tech community is incredible professors students faculty staff and also things like on game days walking around campus and seeing the fans and how excited they are to just support georgia tech and love it all is so much fun. It's confirmed everything for me is it, to be so positive with Georgia Tech. And I've loved it so much. I'm planning to come back and get my master's here next year. So they can't get rid of me that easily. All right. I'll take it after Greeny. Um, I had very, very similar feelings for Georgia Tech. Um, even going into my senior year, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go to Ash State. I'm going to go to some liberal arts school. I'm going to study biochemistry, and I'm going to, it's going to be big. It's going to be cool. Um, and then my dad was like, you know what? You know, like, Georgia Tech's a really, a really good school in the state. I was like, what, what, what is this? Um, so my very first tour at Georgia Tech, I, like, really went into it. I was like, you know what? I'm here to make my parents happy um, because it's an in-state school, and they wouldn't have to pay as much money. So I'm here to make everyone else happy. Um, and then it just so happens, uh, my tour guide, uh, good friends with the other tour guides here, he was a trumpet player in the band who graduated last year. Um, one of the kindest persons you will ever meet in your life. Um, and just the energy he exuded on that tour, it was unlike anything else. Um, I toured all the other schools and nothing felt quite like it. Um, it was just everything he said, like reaffirmed that there's a community here that is just something that I've experienced every single day. Um, and just seeing how passionate other students are about what they're doing. Um, so like coming in, I originally came to Georgia Tech because as soon as I came on that tour, I felt like there was a community here. Um, Everyone was like smiley, happy. Um, Jeremy, the tour guide, was absolutely great. Um, answered all of the annoying questions that my parents had um, because they had to berate him with questions. Uh, and like 
having the option to do marching band while not being a music major was not something that I thought was possible. Um, so hearing that I could do that at Georgia Tech was fun because once again, band nerds love to do it. Um, and then just like now being at Tech, the community is unlike anything else, um, especially within the band ensembles. Every band ensemble, they're, you're just gonna, they're gonna become your best friends. Um, and it's amazing to be here because you're motivated by your peers, um, seeing them do awesome things. And you're just like, you know what? I wanna keep working to be better. Um, and that's just the amazing community here at Georgia Tech, just pushing you along. And even if you're having a bad day, um, which happens to everybody, um, you know that you always have someone that's gonna support you. Uh, and that is my number one favorite thing about Georgia Tech is that community that will always support you. Awesome, well, thanks Joel for sharing those. I will um, give mine too real quick while we have a couple minutes. Um, so me, um, I am an in-state student, but I wasn't necessarily looking to stay in-state. Um, I was kind of keeping my options open. I was looking at schools all over the South and all over the Southeast. Um, and I really looked at schools and I was like, I want a school that has good academics. I want a school that has good um, hands-on experience, real world um, opportunities. And I want a school that has the extracurriculars um, that I'm interested in. And I found a lot of schools that were good at one, some that were good at none, um, some that maybe had two. Um, but of all the schools I looked at and um, thought about, Georgia Tech was the only school I found um, that I thought truly excelled in all three. Um, and that was my main deciding factor for coming to Georgia Tech. Um, I know when I came to Georgia Tech that I was going to get a world-class education from the best professors in the world. I mean, half the professors I've taken, like, wrote the textbook for the class. It's like the standard across the world, you know? Um, I've been able to engage in undergraduate research opportunities and have several different internships during my time here at Tech, giving me invaluable experience outside the classroom, but still in the areas I'm interested in. And then also, um, like we've talked about so much today, I've been able to pursue my musical interests through marching band, pep band, and jazz band. And even outside of that, I've been able to pursue um, my other interests and hobbies that I have um, at a very high level here at Georgia Tech. Um, and I thought it was really unique for me to find a school that I thought was absolute best of the best, and not one or two, but every single one of those areas. And so for that reason, I came here, and I'm so glad I did. Um, this place has been absolute home to me over the uh, past four years. Um, and I guess like Greeny, they can't get, me, get rid of me yet. Um, I like it enough, I'm gonna, I've signed on for another one and a half. So um, it really is a special place and I'm so glad to be a part of this community here. Um, but yeah, um, with that said, I guess we are gonna officially wrap up here with our student panel. Once again, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day um, to come here and learn a little bit about Georgia Tech um, learn about our music programs and opportunities through that side of Georgia Tech here, um, and for asking all the great questions y'all had for us today. Um, I know I really appreciate it. I'm glad I got the opportunity to speak to y'all. Um, and with that being said, I hope y'all have a great day.